So we watched our video of how to take the engine out of the Vanguard, the Vanguard engine out of the K Singer Salt tractors. This is how you, you get to the coil packs and uh, your intake manifold to change a carburetor, the flywheel, anything else you have to do in there. So watch the video on the removal and installation of the engine. So always when you're working on the engine, just blow it off real good so nothing falls in. We're not opening it up too much right now, but still just get the crap out of your way. Obviously take your air filter and air cleaner housing out. These are high capacity air filters we use in the Vanguards. The only filter we'll use is uh, the high capacity. The OEM ones are great. And we found actually a couple of decent aftermarket ones that we like. Um, but it's recommended to use high capacity. It helps with the oil and the air filter issues and breather issues too. You got five 10 millimeter bolts right up here. And here you got your four here. If you're doing this on the tractor with everything hooked up, even when it's off, Take your choke and close it just in case so the bolts don't fall down in. These we take off um, because there's no way to get the, the for the ones that have the adjustable uh, needle, there's no way to get in there with this. And even without this, it's very hard to get in there in the case finger soles. So we take these off and leave them. And if you have an adjustable screw back here, then you can kind of access it with a pair of pliers. With this on here, you absolutely can't when it's on the tractor. All right, so we loosened these when we were removing the engine. So you got these two here, and there's one down here. This side's a little bit more complex, but not a ton. You got the one down here. This one here. And then up top, we've got, we got these two 11s. These are tens, by the way. Hold the fuel pump on. These are the other uh, Icon brand pliers. I like to pick them up. There are some good reviews. And I uh, got them on the crash cart. Been using them pretty handy. And I actually like them. Their fit and finish is pretty nice. For the money, you can't beat them. They're not Nipex quality, but they're not Nipex price. And so far, so good. I Actually, they're a little bit wider here. And they work really well for these. This has got to come off the carburetor anyways. So I'm going to take it off up here. Yep, these are 12s. Oh, a lot of 12 and a 13. Nope. Usually there's a mark on them. You can kind of see where it was. This 12, and there's a 12 over here. So now I'm going to take a look and see if I see anything super obvious that would be messing with this thing. The gaps on here don't look too bad. Like I said, I'm almost sure it's a fuel delivery issue, but we will check these. There is a fair amount of rust on there for being just changed out. We like to clean these up a little bit. Make sure there's still a good magnet on them. Yep. The gap doesn't look bad. So I don't see much with the coil. So here's that diode wire, that's important. And it was not replaced when he changed these. It's connected. Make sure it's not touching anything. It is factory still because it's got original clips and stuff looks like on it. So this is still connected here. I don't see anything touching or shorting out, but we're going to replace this wire anyways. It is a little taut, which they need to be tight, but that one's fairly tight. Now we have access to this diode wire, and you can see it. You see this little clip? It hangs out in and keeps it off. The engine heat and vibration but they are tight so you want to get in here and clean this up while you can so we stock these coil kits we put together a full coil kit that includes this diode wire and we have oem coil kits and aftermarket coil kits that both include the oem diode wire depending on your budget uh, the oem kits are definitely the ones to go with but the aftermarket ones we've had good luck with as well Always replace this when you're doing these coils. Always we recommend doing your key switch when you replace the coils and vice versa. 
because we find a lot of times the key switch will fail and then the coils will or the coils will fail and then the key switch and i think there's probably some some truth to them having an effect on each other um and if the key switch is going erratic and, and grounding when it shouldn't or sending power to these then we got issues or if this diode wire fails and sends uh, you can have some issues too so this is the new boot diode wire goes there i'll show you real quick we're not going to replace these coils since he just did but we'll show you how we do them so this is how you take them off these screws are real small so you got to be real careful with them and they also will round fairly easy for whatever reason they do leave you a, a screwdriver and you can try that first most of the time i find they don't always come out with a screwdriver uh, good these ones aren't too bad since you just replaced them i didn't expect them to be too bad but they could be a little rounded for demonstration purposes we'll take these out and replace them for you while we're doing this stuff but I was going to regap them anyways just so we know they're done correctly and we we're going to change this wire anyways so and i don't want to say this is a problem with the brakes but the coils do fail i don't want to say on a regular basis they're just what they do and they all do different things when they fail and make the engine run differently so whoever gets this box with the fingerprints on it i promise you it's brand new i apologize but these are the brand new oem brakes coils you, you got to put your spark plug end on depending on uh what style you have it comes with it the briggs ones do i don't you call if the aftermarkets do um but the point of this they give you this nifty little tag with some instructions or destructions but the point of this tag is the thickness is actually what they tell you to use to gap this so just to give you that heads up that's what you do you gap it in there i'm going to use feeler gauges that's how we usually do them, but this is handy. It works just as well. It's not super critical as long as they're not touching and as long as it's not too far away, um, you can be off a little bit. And that said about the fingerprints, it's kind of a joke, but it's kind of not. Uh, we don't do parts full time. It's just a part of our business model. We're uh, doing service and, and working on tractors to sell and, and repairing equipment and stuff full time. So when we pull orders and you got fingerprints on them, I apologize. Sometimes we try to throw gloves on or clean our hands, but it's usually because we try to get your parts out as soon as we can. And we can be in the middle of something like this and if we get a couple parts orders we'll stop put them together and try to get them out before the uh the shipping deadline so hopefully you guys getting speedy products is, is worth a few fingerprints but if the website says they're new i promise you they're brand new uh we don't play any games and everybody will tell you we're as honest as it can be and uh that just happens to be the deal and sometimes we pull products out of packages to do pictures for the website for sales or a video on and I'll put them back in. We usually try not to send the open products out, but if you happen to get one, that's why. It was because it was photographed for a, for a sale in the website, not because it was used. All right, back to this thing. One thing I want to note, since we were actually just doing this for demonstration purposes and didn't replace these coils since the previous owner just had them done recently, apparently. When you get these armatures or these coils, many brands will have a side that says this side out or this side towards engine or flywheel side. So just make note of that so that they're actually installed correctly. Uh, since we weren't installing these, I, I forgot to mention that in the video. So again, just read it. It'll give you instructions on what side faces out or faces towards the engine or faces towards the flywheel or however they're uh, individually noted on, on whatever brand coil you have. So you can use any feeler gauges, but I'll tell you what, the brass ones make your life a lot less frustrating if you're doing this because of the magnetic purpose. Um, so the way you set these, I always spray these when I put them in. Just a little something. You'll see this is slotted on an oval so you can adjust. And when you're doing this, when you first start, you don't want the magnet there next to you because it's going to fight you. That's the magnet. Always start these by hand. And always install them by hand. Don't use a power tool because these little cheap screws will break or the aluminum engine will strip. I'll get these snugged up just a tiny bit so there's some resistance on them. This touches there. That's touching there. And then just pick it up and then snug them up just a little bit so it doesn't fall by itself. That's it. And then... You can do this part first or now, but do it before you set your gap. So you want to be careful, but you want to clean this magnet surface up. This one's pretty nasty. It's going to change the magnetic force a little bit. It's also going to change the gap because you have this buildup. You don't want to take material off here. So a little bit of steel wool is not really great because of the magnetic, but if that's what you got, 
sandpaper or a scotch white pad works good. You can go easy with something like this if you're comfortable. Clean it up, you're not removing material. This should have a good magnetic pull to it. If it doesn't, then you need to replace it. Or your flywheel, depending on what's available. There is a screw on here. You can see she's worn down pretty good, and that's telling me probably at some point somebody had these gap too quick close or something might have gotten in here. But that's why you can gap them, you can change that. Alright, and so now you can take your piece of paper or your feeler gauge. So your 0 0.010 feeler gauge and how you do it with the magnet is you'll see this doesn't it's not magnetic the brass isn't and what i'll do is i'll take this if you got longer feeler gauges which i got to set in the truck but this will work for what we're trying to show you you can see this is bent because we used it for this before and then this might have tightened up a hair too much Drop it there, and then just snug this up again. Don't go crazy with it yet. And then pull your ferro gauge out, and then you can do it from this direction or rotate it some more. If you got a longer one, you can do both at the same time, and that's the best way to do it, but this is fine. Again, loosen this up. Let the magnet pull it. You gotta push it down a little bit. You'll see it's there. And again, just to snug it up slightly. Pull your filler gauge out. And rotate it around. And then check your, make sure it didn't change this one while you did that one, because sometimes it will. And if that fits in there and lets you pull it out, it might be a hair tight. This one might be a hair tight, but it's not bad. You might want to just back this off a slight bit. And just let it kind of just fall loosely. Sometimes you got to push them to get them down there and then sometimes reset them and let it fall. But as long as this drags and it, it is able to go in and out, you're fine. Again, this magnet looks like she's worn a little crooked. But as long as it doesn't touch, that's kind of your key. And go back down to this one. And do the same thing. Yeah, that feels good. So now just give these a, a good snug. With the screwdriver, I go in and I just snug these up. Every You'll get a feel for it where it needs to be. You want those threads to grab and expand, but you don't want to go too much. And this is a big ratchet, so that's why I'm holding it down here for the feel of the leverage. And that's happy. Now, once they're tight again, just double check what you got going on here. Sometimes they will move, not usually, but sometimes. That pass is fine. Let's do the same over here pass is fine I'm happy with that one do the same over here check how these were gapped so if anything this one might be slightly loose but again it's close enough this isn't super super critical you know you don't want to be two or three sizes above but if you got a little drag and, and whatnot I think you're probably all right so, this is important pay attention on this is this has it's got a diode so it's basically electrical or electricity check valve and it only allows electricity to flow one way so this has to be hooked up correctly so when you're taking the old one off just do the same thing we've had people hook these up the wrong way and and things get messed up and the tractor won't run and won't start won't shut off whatever again the contact a little contact cleaner or brake parts cleaner whatever you got handy so this end is this end with the one wire with this diode on the end and it's going to go in through here to the spade on the back of the coil pack. Make sure it's on there good. All the way down it'll snap in so it's got to go all the way down. We have this little holder here but we're not going to hook that up quite yet. And then here's where it gets confusing sometimes for some people so you got your diode going to the coil here just like you have the diode over here to the coil 
and then this 90 degree goes to the ground block here so just pull this off of here and then careful because this is sitting in plastic pull this off the coil I like to put a little cleaner on there put your coil pack diode on try not to bend this diode to break it it's got a little flexibility and stuff but if you got to reach in here with a pair of pliers to get it on there pull on the on the uh, terminal and not the wire this is where the difference in the pliers are the nipbacks are a little more finesse a little nicer for this kind of thing but we'll get by I don't want to walk to the truck right now one snap two snap that's on there when you're putting this on just put a little pressure on this stud just sitting in this plastic clip and you don't want to break that this too should have a couple little snaps in there there we go did them both at once tuck this wire out of the way and make sure it's not going to get caught in your flywheel this one's a little bit looser the other one was a little tight i didn't like this one might be a hair loose but i'd rather that i don't think there's any way it's really going to get caught in that flywheel if you are concerned you can do something to tie it off somewhere if you need to all right so we'll fire it up The solenoid shut off by taking power away, it kills the fuel supply. This is grounding out your coils, so that's how these shut off both ways. And then, uh, our video that shows you how to take it out will show you how to put it back in. But as far as this part goes, your carburetor or your coils, whatever video we're looking on. Uh, yeah, and then install your cover, you got your bolts, your fuel pump, that. Um, if you need to be reminded how to do that, that'll be in the take the engine on and off video. Here should be all set. You put your gasket, make sure you got your gasket here with your air intake and air cleaner. Put that on, bolt it all together. Your fuel line routed out of the way with a good filter on it. And then you got to make sure you hook up this to your power and the harness and that should be it and then hook your ground wires up here for your coil from the key switch thanks for watching